What's happening out there? How about that for a big bang? Let's see if there's anybody out there gonna watch us tonight. I'm gonna welcome everybody in and I'm gonna shift gears. So let's see, make sure everybody can hear me. Looks like they can. Nobody's gonna watch. <laughs> oh, I bet they do. See, there's Lisa watching. Told you. There's George. Welcome in. I love you too, my brother, Will. Good to see you. Gloria, good to see you. Will, you pay attention to this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rock your world here in just a few minutes. I want you in. Hey, Phoebe. How are you? <clears throat> good to see you guys. Bob, welcome. I don't recognize you. I'm glad you're here. Jackie, you're always here. Love it. Good to see you. Yeah, Will, I want you in all the way here because uh, th this is a big deal what we're gonna talk about tonight. Let's wait a few more minutes to get everybody in. I'm gonna kinda of switch moods, um, our motives, or what all that. Phoebe, I know you're blessed. Good to see everybody out there. Hey, Lace, come on in here. We're gonna talk about some good stuff tonight. I'll never steer you wrong. Those of you that uh, first time tune, uh, tuning into here, we do this every Sunday night at seven o'clock, and. I'll promise you one thing. I'll never, never tell you something that's not true. Pam, good to see you. Love it. Welcome in here. We're just going to give a few more minutes to get into the mode here. Greg, good to see you. Welcome. I don't rec If I don't recognize you, you might have tuned in before, but I can't remember everybody, to be honest with you. Be very honest with you. I've got some really good stuff to share with you tonight, and some of the stuff could be life-changing, so you don't want to miss out. Jonathan, good to see you, my brother. Welcome back. Good to see you. I'm so glad you're here. Kena, there is my girl. How are you? Good to see you. Blessed to have you all here tonight. I'm in one of them blessed moods. I can't help it. I got it all over. I got it all over. I was busy today. You know, I like that. I like being busy. I like to work. Rick, come on in here. Glad to see you. We're going we're gonna to hit on some stuff tonight that's big deal. That's a big deal stuff. <laughs> Could help you out. Promise. Never steer you wrong. I know that the folks out there, if you guys see somebody that's popped in new that, that you're a regular listener and you, uh, you see somebody that, that you don't recognize, please tell them what we do out there. My brother, Mike Novus. <laughs> tell them what we do out there because this, is, this program is yours. You know, This is for you. I don't do this for me. I do it for you. So uh, tonight's kind of a big deal. I want you, I want you all to tune in if you can spare the time. And I know that time is our most precious commodity. And I appreciate you. you I really mean this. I appreciate you. You taking time out for you to for to listen to what I got to say. Um, Jennifer, good to see you. If you guys recognize somebody out there, or don't recognize somebody out there, and you're regular listening, tell them what we do here. We talk about the good stuff. We talk about what's possible. We're not, we're not, we could care less about what we can't do. We're not, we're not interested in that. We're going to talk about what's possible and what we can do and how to overcome what are perceived as obstacles. Hey, Ray Ray, good to see you. <clears throat> what are obstacles in our lives? And, uh, you know, there's a bunch of us now that never were drunk or addicted. There's some of us that are watching that are in full-blown long-term recovery. Some people are new in recovery. I'm here to tell you that there's life after a tragedy like living a lifestyle of addicted and alcoholism, because I did it. I know all about that stuff, you know. I'm just telling you that now that we're in full-blown recovery, here's what we can do. We don't got to sit around and look at our shoes. I can tell you that. We can be difference makers. You want to end the stigma? This is how you end the stigma. Be a difference maker. That's what ends the stigma, right? All right, so let, let's just go right into it. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is the in-between. I, I, I know that, that you may not recognize that, but stick with me. I'm going somewhere here. We're not going to talk about living in the past. I mean, so many people, we've talked about that at nauseum. We all know we can't live in the past. And we all know this, that we can't live in the future. 
We can't live worried about what's going to happen down the road. We can't do it. We can't control that, right? What we control is right now. That's what we can control right now. We are living in the now. If you're spending all your time looking in the rearview mirror, you're not going to see what's in front of you. If you're spending all your time worried about what's going to happen, oh my gosh, it's going to be this, all this, what's the country's going to hell, <clears throat> all that. You're wasting your time. You can't control the future and you can't control your past. What you can do is control the now. Live in the now, here and now. How you do that, you know. <clears throat> it's, a, it's an effort. It, it, it consumes, living in the past and, and worrying about the future consumes, consumes you. It does. It's all consuming. And it, it's a big old brick wall between what you're capable of. That's what's holding you back is living in the past or worrying about the future than things that you cannot change, period. That's what's holding you back. I'm telling you the truth. Until you're able to live in the here and the now, you're going to struggle all kinds of stuff because it's all in your way. L living in stuff that you can't control. <laughs> well, I like it. Living in stuff that you can't control is a waste of your time. It is. You'll never get to the beauty of life is living in the in-between, in between the past and the future. It's the living in the now. And when you're living in the now, you avoid all the stories you tell yourself. What happens if this happens and if this happens and if this happens? That turns into a great big story that dominates you, your thought process for that moment. Or look at what I did, look at what I did, look at what I did. The beauty and the blessing is of recovery is living in the now. The beauty and the blessing of anything that's positive is living right now. That doesn't mean you don't have goals. That doesn't mean you don't go for it. We're going to talk about that in a minute. The blessing is living in the now. All right, and so and so people that live in the past, and I got, again, I don't I'm not going to talk about that much. I'm done with that. People that live in the past they, they, they get these life lessons, and many of us, those life lessons are painful. When you live in the past of the pain, the beauty of it now is you can use those life lessons for the good. You went through all that. Live now and share with the good. You know, that's I need to read some of this because... You know, now is when you apply those life lessons. We suffered them. They were, they, money of them turned into be a blessing. Certainly were for me. But now is when you apply those. Right now. Right now. Does that make sense? I hope so. I'm going to ask a very serious question. And <clears throat> I want you, you know, you don't have to make up something to say. We'll get a buy just fine. If there is someone out there watching me right now that's struggling with anything, struggling with anything, and wants to share what that struggle is, I, I'll be able to show you something. And it doesn't mean drugs or alcohol. It can mean a lot of different things. If you're struggling in any situation right now in your life, please type it up there. You know, we're, we're here, there's nobody here going to call you out and point a finger at you. you. I promise you, I'll delete that person forever. And we never have to do that. We are a loving and kind group of people here. We've been for a couple of years now. We want you in. If something doesn't have to do with drugs or alcohol, in fact, it'd be better if it didn't, is bothering you, I'm going to share something with you that could click and change your life. Kina, your weight. Everybody else can stop because now, Gloria, good. Now I'm going to share with you something that will change your life. Now we're going to talk about Kina and Gloria and we're going to talk about their weight. 
Let me ask you this. <clears throat> Are you willing to admit that you're powerless over what you eat and that your weight has become unmanageable? For those of you that live in recovery, you see where I'm going with this. Are you willing to admit that you're powerless over what you eat or your lack of exercise and because of that, your life and your weight have become unmanageable? Kina says yes. Now, Kina, I know you're a person of faith. So stick with me here. Well, are you willing to come to believe that a power greater than yourself could restore you to sanity? And restore you to that's part of your life that's unmanageable. For those of you, see, I know Kina, and I know the power greater than herself is God. If God doesn't work for you, are you willing to go and reach out to other people who are doing it, who are living a life of no food addictions and don't, are no longer powerless over what they eat, are you willing to listen to that group of people or read a program or go attend a class of people who are doing it? Is that knowledge a power greater than yourself? For me, it's God. For Kina, it's God. I can't speak for none of anybody else. But the knowledge of a group or a program can be a power greater than yourself if they're doing what you want to do. Make sense? Tina, are you willing to turn, and Gloria also, I'm just, I see, I can only see, you know. Are you willing to make a decision to turn your will over? Are you willing to turn your will over? Are you willing to do that? If you're willing to turn your will over to the care of God as you understand them, or a group who, as you understand them, if you're willing, are you willing to do that? I'm going to get, I, we're, we're going to help you here. This is real stuff. Are you, have you made a decision? Are you willing? You, it, you don't have to say anything more than I'm willing or yes, I'm willing. Doesn't say how to do it yet. We're going to get to that. Gloria said, yes, became willing. All right, here's a biggie. It's going to stick to you a minute. Okay. Are you willing to make a fearless and moral inventory of yourself? Are you willing to make a fearless and moral inventory of yourself that says the answers to why this part of your life has become, and you become powerless over food, and this type of your life has become unmanageable? Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to make a searching and fearless moral inventory? Now, overeating or not controlling your diet is not a moral thing, but you know the, my point here. Are you willing to do that? And are you willing to be honest with yourself to the point of tears? Are you willing to be honest with yourself to the point of tears? Are you? Are you, are you willing to make a moral inventory of why you do what you do and be honest with yourself? And part of that's fear. We're going to talk about fear in a little bit. <clears throat> Now, this is kind of tricky, and I'm, I'm guessing you guys' answer is yes. This is kind of tricky, so, so bear with me here a minute. <clears throat> we admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact natures of our wrongs. This part of that will apply to you. Part of that may be confiding in your spouse and saying, listen, I know I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm working on this. Period. You don't have to turn it into any more than that. We admit it to ourselves, to God, to ourselves. That's the biggest deal right there, those two. And to another human being, the exact nature of our wrongs. Use caution. Use some common sense here. You can talk to somebody in confidence. You could say simply, listen, I can't get past little Debbie. I eat too much and I don't know how to fix that but I am entirely willing to learn how. Wouldn't that be a huggable moment for you and your husband or your spouse, or your girlfriend, whoever that is? What a wonderful huggable moment that would be. 
See, that's drop dead honest stuff right there. That's, that's drop dead honest. Isn't that exciting though? What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? <clears throat> Humbly ask God, power greater than yourself to remove this shortcoming in your life. <clears throat> Humbly ask God to remove this shortcoming in your life. Well, how hard is that? When it's sincere, you'll be amazed for you're halfway through, right? What's a power greater than yourself? Is it a diet program that don't work? Or is it a real searching and fearless moral inventory? Kina, you're not stuck. We're going to get you unstuck right this minute. You've done that, but have you done the first five? See, these are the steps of recovery from anything. Gambling, overeating, alcoholism, drug addiction, relationship destroyers. This is the, these are the instructions. Yeah, you may have asked God. I'm not saying you didn't. But you need to do these first five. You can't skip into the middle. That makes sense to you? Now, anybody that doesn't know these steps and doesn't know where to find them, you got a Google bar. Just talk into your phone and say, 12 steps of AA or 12 steps of NA or 12, 12 step programs of any kind. They all fit. This is how we use these. We change the words to fit our situation. So no, you're not stuck. And I'm going to show you this, these first five, six, are how to not get, stay stuck. Okay? <clears throat> now, this may or may not apply, but play with me here a minute. We made a list of all persons we have harmed because of this behavior and became willing to make amends to them all. Listen, you don't owe anybody an apology for anything. The only list that you need to make is write your name down. Right? Because our, our overeating or our lack of uh, passion or dedication to exercise is harming us. I, I do. I know. I, you know, you're, you're not talking to somebody that doesn't fight a bunch of stuff. I was doing great and I went off the deep end a couple, two or three days ago. And I know what to do. I just reel myself back in. So here's one thing, you know, I want you to hear, me, hear this here. <clears throat> lots of people, lots of people fall short. Almost everybody. So when you fall short, you get up and get back on the wagon. That's what you do. And you do that a number of times, pretty soon you won't do it anymore. <clears throat> So when you talk to your creator, like I'm talking to Kina right now on purpose because I know, I know her faith is in God. When you talk to your creator, pray about following these steps. Ask for guidance on how to do that. See, these are the instructions for anything. You get just started at step one. I couldn't, I couldn't have lived a life of recovery for the past eight plus years without this. I couldn't write my book without this. I couldn't maintain business relationships. I couldn't maintain my weight. I couldn't, I couldn't get Perry out of the way without this stuff. These are the instructions for a better life for all of us, no matter what our challenge is. We continue to take personal inventory. Yeah, just Google them. Print them right out, Gloria. We, can, we continue to take personal inventory, and when we were wrong, we promptly admitted it. We keep track of what we're trying to do, and when we fail, admit it, stop it, go try it, get right back up on the wagon. If you live in guilt and shame because you failed before, you're going to continue to fail. When you have the 12 steps of any recovery in your life, this is the recipe. This is the recipe. That's what it is. It is. Rich, my brother. <clears throat> we sought through prayer and meditation to prove our conscious contact with God as we understand him. Pray, Kina, praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. Does that make sense? Sure it does. See, you're, you're, you're about to get well. You, you, dear, are about to get well. This is how you do it, right here. 
Google Gloria's doing. And I know that she's listening to me and she loves, she knows I love her. And uh, this stuff is truth. And she knows I would never say anything to hurt her feelings ever, ever. She knows that. Here's what's exciting for us when we overcome these obstacles in our lives. <clears throat> Having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we tried to carry this message to other blank, whatever that is, addicts, overeaters, whatever that is, and to practice these principles in all of our affairs. When you overcome something like an eating disorder or an eating addiction or a food addiction <clears throat> or eating too much and whether you're addicted or not, doesn't matter. When you overcome that by using a 12-step method of your choice, you can apply this to any area of your life, right on down to, I mean, everything. I mean, I, I make a conscious decision about things I do now based on this knowledge. And if you're following me with this right here, as far as it comes to, uh, to weight or overeating or any of that, then welcome to this to step into freedom because that's what this book is all about. That right there. We can use the set of instructions that have cured so many, that have cured so many from addiction and alcoholism and food and everything in the world. We can live by these rules. And when we live by these and when we follow the instructions, guess what? We live a great, productive, wonderful life full of problems. <laughs> so here you go. Know that there's going to still be problems, of course. But now there's a better way to handle it. See, when I when I had to face life back when, I tried to bury face in life the reality by drinking. Many people do that with food. They make them try to make themselves feel better with food or another substance. And the more that I used to drink, the worse I felt, the more guilty I felt. It never made any of it go away, ever made it worse. Make sense, you guys? Use that knowledge. Know that what we're doing, trying to hide things or to cover up pain, cover up pain, I get it. You know, I get it. I, I did it. When we're trying to cover up pain and we're using food or we're using substances or whatever, it just makes the pain worse. <clears throat> when we learn how to do these steps in any area of our life, the pain will stop. Then we can work on what's real. And I promise you, Kina, I love you so, so very much. If we're using pain, food, to cover up our pain, the pain will never go away. That's the truth. <clears throat> sure, sure you did, Pam. So I wanted to share that with you tonight. These are the instructions. If they put those in the water, country would be a better place. The world would be a better place. You know what? Let's get excited about something. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, Pam, that's rock star stuff. You should love that, Rich. I love it too, you know. All right. <clears throat> Here's going right in with the, cover, the pain cover-up. Let's go right into that. Many of us don't change anything because of fear. You've heard that a thousand times, and what does that mean? <clears throat> if I'm drinking, I when I was drinking, I was afraid to face life on life's terms. Blah, 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 blah. That's the truth. So if we're doing other activities, we are afraid to face life on life's terms. We're trying to cover up something that's hurting us. It won't work. By the way, I've written a wonderful piece about using these steps to get through your grief. It's a recipe right there. There's the instructions. All right? So I get it. 
I drank to hide my pain. That's what I did. The pain of never fitting in, the pain of never being good enough, the pain of all of it. And then once I was addicted, I drank to cover up the shame. When we do hard things like practicing the step, then our lives become easy. Rich, preach it, brother, because I'm telling you out there, the two that talked about eating too much, the truth will set you free. If we do the work to follow the steps, which are so simple, I mean, a drunk, a drunk, a drug addict, many of us have done this and are living free today. Many of it, of us, are living free today because of these instructions. And you can live free from anything in your life using these instructions. I'm promising you that. If you suck at your relations, your relationships, what are you doing really? You're trying to find someone to cover up your pain. Step into freedom. That's why, that's what this whole book is all about, which is, I keep saying this, it's almost there. It's written. We just got the stories back from the editor. Rich, yours is good. Phoebe, yours is really good. <clears throat> All right, so <clears throat> take a look at what you're afraid of on a daily basis. Take a look at what you're afraid of on a daily basis. And what is a normal fear? What's a normal fear? For a, 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 a drunk... For, for a man like me going and hanging around a bunch of drunks, I should be afraid of that. Therefore, I don't do it. I'm not even tempted to do it. I don't even think about it. But why would I want to put myself in a position to fail? So that would be a normal and healthy fear. But do you know the difference between fear that you're creating? <clears throat> do you know the difference of that? What are you afraid of? I'm afraid if I stop eating that I'll have to face some stuff. I'm afraid if I stop drinking, I'll have to face some stuff. I'm afraid if I stop gambling, I'm going to have to face some stuff. I'm afraid of uh, if I don't binge and purge, I'm going to have to face some stuff. What you're afraid of is what's holding you back, period. Those, those steps will set you free. <laughs> they will. You need to get excited, especially if you're upset right now because you're on the verge. You're on the edge of making a change in your life forever. Trust me, if an alcoholic like me can fall down the stairs after getting out of jail for three days, fall down the stairs into an AA meeting and listen to the, what those people had to say to me and I could get sober using these steps, you can sure stop eating Orioles. You can sure start being better at your relationships. Promise. You can sure stop a, your gambling. Because it's a mask, you guys. It is. We're trying to cover up something. We love you how you are, believe it or not. Listen to my, listen to my brother Rich and, tell, and see what he's, read, what he's writing. Come on now. Get into that. <clears throat> I am telling you this, and I'm saying it. God, for me it's God, make no apologies. God places the really good things in your life right past terror. See, I was terrified to live a sober life. But the good things were just on the other side of that terror. And when I stopped being afraid of living and feeling and acting when I stopped being afraid of that, the, the good stuff was on the uh, just on the other side of the terror. And it's put there for a reason. What are you afraid of? If you stop using that you'll have to face life, let me tell you from experience, the good stuff is just on the other side of terror. It is. It's waiting for you. It's waiting for you. Here's the instructions on how to do it. I couldn't put together a car in a million years even if I had the instructions. The reason why these work is because there's only 12 of them and they're simple. <laughs> oh my goodness. You know, uh, 
there's a lot of us that procrastinate. And gosh, isn't there guilt, isn't there guilt involved in that? Terrible, it's terrible guilt. I should do this, I should do that. Put it off, put it off, put it off. Do you realize it's way more painful to put that stuff off than it is just to do it? Some of us have gotten so bad, it's just simple things like picking up your laundry, doing the dishes. It's just simple stuff. We put it off, put it off, put it off. Declutter in our lives, which has got power. Do, do, do you realize that procrastination was someone who is continuously in procrastination? That's a self-esteem problem. Did you know that? You're holding yourself back. What, what difference does it make anyway? Right? Uh, leave that laundry laying on the floor. Who cares? Do you see how that builds a self-esteem problem? Do you see when you're standing in front of the refrigerator? I've done it. I know. At midnight. Do you see what that can create? See, all that stuff is holding us back from being the best version of us that we can be. <clears throat> And when you're being the best version of yourself that you can be, the con universe connects with you and the doors start opening every chance that there is. And yes, you're not going to be perfect. And yes, you're going to make mistakes. And the quality of your life will depend on how you can pick yourself up from those. Step into freedom. Step into freedom. These are the steps. Oh, there's more good stuff. You can't believe it. You can't believe how good it is. <clears throat> Another thing that's going to hold you back, and, and I've been guilty, big time, but I'm really way more conscious of it now than I really have ever been, is, is that's complaining. <clears throat> you live in an era of endless possibilities. You, this time in our lives, in this world, this time, the possibilities for you and I are, I don't care if you're 80 years old, are limitless. Yet we complain constantly. Here's what's even more toxic than that. You hook up with a bunch of friends that are complaining too. They're complainers too. Now, all that energy, let, please explain to me how that makes you better. How, how that would make you better. Complaining all the time and then hooking up with other people that complain all the time. You've heard the term, cliche, if you will, birds of a feather flock together. Do you know why that's been around for 500 years? Because it's true. Winners run with winners. Complainers run with complainers. Drunks run with drunks. Addicts run with addicts. Where do you want to be in that? I, I, I don't want to sit around a bunch of people that can find something, you know. I, I use this a lot of times. There are people that complain constantly. They could find something wrong with a $100 bill. And I'll tell you something that's true. People that can find something wrong with a $100 bill will never have very many. Because you're focusing on what's wrong all the time. Gosh, I am so glad I don't live like that anymore. <laughs> Boo-hoo, you know? I don't live like that anymore. I'm not too old to make a difference. I'm not too old to learn. I love to learn. I'm a lifelong learner. I'm committed. I'm a lifelong learner, and I have the heart of a teacher. Gosh, what a blessing. And I had those all for years, and I didn't know it. But now, since I went past my terror, I'm on the other side of that fear. Now, I realize we got to live practical. we got to pay the rent and house payment, the rent. we got to pay the bills and all that. But what you're afraid of is holding you back. And if it's a potential, something in your life has potential, then you need to try to, to work towards that. Find a job that you would do if you didn't need a paycheck. Again, I realize there's, 
you know, the practicalities of that. But could you find a passion that you would do if there wasn't a paycheck at the end of it? Of course you can. Of course you can. You know how many people will wake up tomorrow morning hating Monday? You don't have to live like that. Step into freedom. I hope that makes some sense to you. <clears throat> Here's how I can help you, okay? Let's say you and I were standing in a corner of a room together and we were looking at the other corner of the room, the opposite corner. And I said to you, <clears throat> I'll give you $10 if you can walk a straight line to the other corner of the room. You start walking. All of a sudden, I put a chair in your way. Well, you walk around that, don't you? And then you go to the other corner. Wait a minute. You don't walk in a straight line. See, that's what humans do. When we know our destination, where we know where we want to go, we figure out a way to get to, get to there. If we're passionate about it, it doesn't matter how big a deal it is. If you're passionate about it and there's a chair in your way or there's a city ordinance in your way or there's a person in your way or there's a set of rules that are in your way or your lack of education is in your way, we learn when we know a destination how to get around it. We, we figure that out. That's what we do. That's what makes us great. When we want something bad enough, we learn how to get around the obstacles. Now, what if I told you something like this? Walk a straight line. In this room, let's walk a straight line. Where? Doesn't matter. You're smart. Figure it out. Just walk a straight line. Now, if I set a chair in your way, you would say this. Now, what do I do? Because you don't know your destination. You don't have a clear and present goal. So you, you, walk, you would just walk another straight line, a different direction. You wouldn't learn how to get around the obstacle. The reason why we don't get around obstacles is because we don't see our, our destination. We don't see us thin. We just see us wandering. Our destination is to overcome these things. So whatever's in our way, we walk around. We walk around it. We work around what's in our way when we have a clear destination. Don't we? Don't we? When we have something in our way, when we want something bad enough, and we know a clear goal, a clear definition of where we're going, don't we do whatever it takes to get to it? Of course we do. You did that when you're getting well from alcoholism. You did it when you're, you know, getting well from a drug addiction. You'll do it when you get want to get well from an eating disorder or where you're eating too much or you're using food like alcohol to cover the pain. You will learn a way to walk around that chair. You'll figure it out. But if you don't have a destination, then you'll walk the straight line. But when an obstacle gets in your way, you'll just turn and make another straight line. There's power in that, and they're good for you. Step into freedom. Right there. <clears throat> you know, I think that's pretty good for tonight, you know. <clears throat> I admitted I was powerless all over alcohol. I admitted it. I was terrified of that. But I want to reiterate one last time. Biggest deals in your life on the other, just on the other side of your fear. So if you're fearing stopping eating to try to cover up something, when you address that fear and you use these steps to get you there, the other side of that fear is the greatest blessings on, the li on your life. And the greatest blessings on your life would be to achieve your destination and then share it with somebody else. Step into freedom. Look at you all out there. Yay! Listen, if you believe in what we're talking about, tune in every Sunday night at 7 o'clock. I do this for you. By, by, by doing it for you, it makes me better. 
it makes me want to get better. Namaste. God bless you. I honor the light in all of you. And hopefully I'll see some of you new people back next Sunday, 7 o'clock Eastern Time. God bless.